Well, welcome back everyone to lesson number five, and this is spirit service and spiritual gifts. In this one, we're going to talk all about, and hopefully you've learned a little bit more about your spiritual gifts. If you haven't taken the, the spiritual gifts inventory, uh, this should be in the link in the bottom. So you can take push, push, pause right now, whether you're recording, um, whether you're watching on YouTube, or whether you're listening to it on the podcast. Uh, you can take that if you want to know more about your spiritual gifts. And uh, it's really, really interesting to know how God has wired you and how you are called to serve the world in whatever way that looks like to you. So we're going to go through these, and uh, I love this. I, I love this this lesson. So one of the questions I want you to ponder wherever you are at is: When have you been in service to something that you were passionate about? What would that look like in which you were giving your time, giving your talents, and what was it about it that you were passionate about? What was that experience like? And did you feel fulfilled? And then the question I have for you is: Why? Why do you think you felt so passionate about that thing? It might be something with the Boy Scouts or the Girl Scouts. It might be a local organization where you went once and you helped reorganize a, a food packaging place. It might have been a place in which you helped at Habitat for Humanity. It might have been cleaning up something at the church. Whatever it looked like, what was that thing about it? What, why was that so powerful for you? I want you to just think about it for a second. So we're going to talk a little bit today about service and spiritual gifts. And there's a couple of things I want to highlight from the very beginning. Everyone is gifted in some way. Everybody has a spiritual gift. It's going to look different for everybody, but everybody has a particular thing that God has given to them to serve the world, to make the world a better place, to bring the kingdom of heaven here on earth. You and I all, every single person on this entire planet has a spiritual gift. Now, the second piece of this is that not every one, not one gift is more important than the other. I used to think that, you know, the person that was up front has the best gift ever, and the person that's in the background kind of supporting the process is just not as good of a gift. But it is so important because they're both, they're, they're not that one's better than the other, they're just different. They look different, and you and I are wired in different ways, so the gifts that we have are different, but not one is more important than the other. They are both intricately linked, and we can't bring the kingdom of God here on earth unless we have each one of them. And the final one is that you might have multiple gifts in different areas. So when you took the spiritual gifts inventory, you might have a gift of uh, sharing your faith. You might have a gift of organization. You might have a gift of leadership. You're, we all have multiple gifts, and we vary in different gifts. So some gifts you're going to have really high points on. Other gifts you're going to have lower points on, and that's okay. Because we're wired in different ways, and you and I have different spiritual gifts, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. If, we, if everybody was a preacher, uh, nothing would ever get done. But if everybody was in support, uh, there would be nobody actually leading the show. So they're just different, and you and I have different spiritual gifts. Now, there's one part of, of spiritual gifts and how we serve and why we serve that's really, really important. And there's a phrase that Jim Harnish uh, uses, and it's called divine discontent in Justin LaRosa. They have this phrase called divine discontent. And there's this one part of the book that I think was really, really interesting. And they write this on page 90, that when we see a need that cries out to be addressed, the Spirit of God sparks a fire in our bones. An itch must be scratched, a deep inner desire to heal things that are broken. And I think this applies to our spiritual gifts because you and I have this particular gift that we're supposed to use in the world. But in the same token, it's supposed to align with something that is our divine discontent. There is something in the world that makes you upset, that makes you angry. Something in the world that you're like, it shouldn't be that way. I mean, think about it for a second. What is one thing in the world that if you could change and make it better, what would it be? Would it be something about the ecosystem and how we destroy the world? Is it something about how politics is done? Is it something about how we read the Bible? Is it something in the financial world about greed? What is the thing that wakes you up in the morning? What's the thing that you are just discontent about, that God has placed upon you? That's what they would call, I would call the divine discontent. And I think when we find out what our divine discontent is, that's kind of step one. 
figuring out what makes what wakes us up in the morning. What do we want to fix in the world? Where do we want to move the world forward? How do we want to bring the kingdom of God here and now? That's step one. And then step two is figuring out what are my gifts? What are the ways in which I can support that thing or make that thing change or make that thing better? What are the ways God has wired me to do that? So they're intricately linked. And I think it's really important to know our divine discontent as well as our spiritual gifts. So I oftentimes think about spiritual gifts as they're kind of put into four different clusters. Uh, The first cluster that I oftentimes think about it is nurturing. So there are a lot of people that want to sit down with somebody and care for them. They want to hear their story. They want to be right next to them. They want, they would spend two hours with somebody just to be and care for them. And I would say that person falls in the path of nurturing. They fall in the path of, of caring for somebody. And that's one specific cluster of spiritual gifts. The second one is outreach. You know those individuals that want to be out in the community, caring for the community, um, going and serving in this place or that place, or fixing this house or raking those leaves? This person has that natural inclination to be of outreach. And that's the second part of a spiritual gift cluster. The third part of it would be witnessing. So you know those people that just want to share with you how, how they're experiencing God, those individuals that really just say, hey, this is how I'm experiencing it. This is how I'm reading the Bible. This is, you know what happened to me today? I had this thing happen and that thing happened. And it just, it comes naturally out of them. They're the ones that want to, to have, they have this spiritual gift clustering called witnessing or witness. And then the fourth spiritual gift cluster is called organizing. And you and I know probably many of these people, you might be one of those people. Of, there's those individuals that love Excel spreadsheets, that love all the details, that want to make sure all the marbles are in the right spot. They want to make sure everything is in the right place. They want to make sure all the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted. You, those people are the organizers, the ones that make things happen. And that will be a fourth spiritual gift cluster. So we have nurturing, outreach, witness, and organizing. So, When you think about those four gifts, those four clusters, where do you resonate with most? Do you like to be with people, sitting down with them? Do you like to witness with people and share your faith? Do you like to be in the community, being in outreach and making sure there's social justice issues being taken care of? Or are you the one that you love those Excel spreadsheets? You love all A57. A You know exactly what's in that you know exactly what's in that cell. Yeah, which one do you find yourself most like? What is your spiritual gift clustering? So I want you to think about which one you would relate to, and I'm going to give you a prompt, and I want to see what you might do in this prompt if you were going to serve in this capacity. Okay, so you got it? You got, you got your spiritual gift cluster? So here is a scenario for you. The church Mandarin and Longleaf is hosting an event with different churches and other organizations um, surrounding, the, surrounding us to alleviate those who are in poverty. We're going to have multiple sites where we're going to invite churches and those who are at risk to come and learn of the resources that are available in Jacksonville and St. John's County. We'll have multiple sites, Mandarin and Longleaf, and we're going to have multiple nonprofit tables as well from, the, from local nonprofits around. So that's what we're trying to, to happen here at Mandarin and Longleaf. So in that scenario, what do you think you would be gifted at? You, what, what, would, what would your your spiritual gift, your spiritual cluster, what would your cluster be good at? And then what would be the ways in which you would want to serve? And what would, be, what would you be most passionate about serving? What would you be most passionate about serving? So when you think about the scenario, I want you to just ponder that. What would you want to do? How would you want to help? And why would you be mo- what would you be most passionate about? So when I think about those four clusters, I think about the nurturing group would be the ones that would want to be on campus, caring for those who are at risk, making sure to connect with one, one another. They might, ha- they might notice somebody that's in a really tough space and they want to sit down and cry with those individuals. And they would want to be the minister to them one-on-one. Now, if you don't find yourself in that nurturing cluster and you're the organizer, that probably, that might not be you. You would much rather be able to do other things. You'd want to be knowing who's going to Mandarin, who's going to Longleaf, what's the schedule look like, what's for lunch, where do we order lunch from, uh, what do these boxes look like, who's going to pick up the lunch, uh, how are we going to pay for the lunch. 
if you were in that organizing cluster, that's probably what you would want to do. And if you're in the nurturing cluster, you might, that might be dreadful to you. You see how, how these interact with each other. Or maybe if you're in the witnessing group, you're the one that would want to be sharing your faith with others. You want to be sharing, well, how is God working in your life and hearing somebody else's story and then sharing that story with somebody else? Yeah, maybe that's what you would be wanting to do. And if you're in the outreach group, you'd want to be connecting with all these individuals and making sure that they're connecting with one another. Now, when you think about those four clusters, if you don't have one of them, the whole thing breaks down. If there is not an organizing person there, nothing is ever going to happen. Nobody's ever going to get fed. Everybody's going to be hungry. We don't know who's going to be speaking when, and it would be a nightmare. At the same token, if you don't have somebody being present and engaged with those individuals, it's going to, be, it's going to feel very sterile. It's going to feel like nobody really cared. It's just X to Y to Z to A to B to C. So these all four gifting clusters work together. And like I said in the very beginning, not one gift is better than the other. They're just different. But they all have to work together. So you and I, we have this spiritual gift that's important. It's needed in the church. It's needed in the world to help bring the kingdom of God here, to help create justice here in the world. But it's about you figuring out what it is and finding a place to serve. Finding a place to serve. There's a scripture passage of 1 Peter 4, and it's verses 8 to 10, and it says, Above all, show sincere love to each other, because love brings about the forgiveness of many sins. Open your homes to each other without complaining, and serve each other according to the gift each person has received as good managers of God's diverse gifts. That sums it up, ev- the whole thing, that last verse. Serve each other according to the gift that you and I have, the gift that God has given to us, and we are good managers of the gifts that God has given to us. So what is the thing in the world that makes you upset, that that burns your heart, that you want to make a change? And what is the gift that God has placed in your life to make that change? So we'll close with a takeaway. Wherever you're at, I want you to think about one thing one thing that stuck out to you, one thing you've learned, one thing you've relearned. And if you're writing it down, you can write it down in your book. If you're, if you're out in the ballot, I just want you to think about it. What's the one thing from this time together that you have learned? All right. Well, thank you for joining us on lesson five. We have one more lesson, session six, faith sharing, and it's probably very different than you've ever heard about the term evangelism and faith sharing, so you don't want to miss it. You can watch it on YouTube, Facebook, listen to it on the podcast, and we hope to see you then. Thanks for joining us.